Hello friends, today we're going to be jumping right back into our Slime Fun tutorial series. Today we're going to be looking at early electricity and power. But before we begin, I just want to thank all of you who have subscribed. Every time someone does, YouTube gives me notification about it and it just makes my day. So if you could please consider checking to see if you're subscribed, it would mean the world to me. It's completely free, it only takes two seconds, and if you want to unsubscribe later, it's totally okay. Thank you all so much for helping to change my life one sub at a time. Alright, so to start with energy and Slime Fun, we're going to need an energy regulator. We can think of this as the brain of our circuit. We need one of these per circuit. So if you have all of your electric machines and generators connected, we only need one. Above our energy regulator, we can see what the total power in the circuit is. If the number is positive, which is in green, then everything in our circuit is being powered. If the number is negative, which is in red, then something in the circuit is going unpowered due to lack of energy, in this case our electric gold pan right here. Our circuit includes anything six blocks away from our energy regulator, along straight lines or axes. This also includes the y-axis, meaning six blocks up and down. These yellow concrete blocks aren't necessary, I just included them to help us visualize the effective area. Next, we have our energy connectors. These do not store, produce, or use energy. They just transmit it. We use these to extend the range of our circuit as each one adds anything within six blocks of the axes to the circuit, just like our energy regulator. They're like wires, but wireless. Next, we have capacitors. These come in varying sizes, but all of them have the same function. They store excess power. The maximum amount it can store is shown here on the item. So for example, the small energy capacitor can store 128 joules. As the capacitor stores power, it shows on the block itself. Now it's at full power. And this stored power is reflected in our energy regulator. It's noteworthy that if we break the capacitor, the energy that it had stored will not stay in the item. It will just disappear. Capacitors also extend the range of our circuits by six blocks along the axes. Now that we know how to direct and store power, we need to know how to make it. Generators produce power, and Slime Fun has a variety of generators. We have solar generators, coal generators, magnesium generators, lava generators, combustion generators, nuclear generators, wither star or nether star based generators. When we're just starting off though, we can only effectively make and use a few. These are our coal generators and our solar generators. Our coal generators produce a constant amount of energy per second as long as there's fuel in it. Each type of fuel varies in how long it lasts. All the types of fuel are listed over here. The only truly viable ones for us right now are coal, charcoal, blaze rods, and dried kelp blocks. All of these will be non-automatic systems for now as we aren't yet at a place where we can automate coal or charcoal production. Blaze farms require a player kill in order to drop blaze rods, although it can be done with a tamed wolf. And dried kelp blocks can't be reasonably produced in quantities high enough to always have enough to run the generator. All slime fun generators produce if they are able, whether or not the circuit needs power. That means excess power, if not stored in capacitors, will be lost and any fuel wasted. We know how much power our circuit uses per second by adding the usage values of all the machines we have in our circuit. For example, if I had two tier 1 electric gold pans in my circuit, I would be using 2 times 2, 4 joules per second, meaning that I would need to produce at least 4 joules per second. Our tier 1 coal generator produces 16 joules per second, while our tier 2 coal generator produces 30 joules per second. Fuel lasts the same time in each of them, so using tier 2 coal generators is more efficient as long as we have the materials to make them. I've gone ahead and broken down the raw materials required for each type of coal generator to make things a bit easier for you all if you plan to make more of one of them at a time. So here are all the materials required for a tier 1 coal generator. And here are all the materials required to make a tier 2 coal generator, including the tier 1 coal generator required in order to make it. Our solar generators produce energy only during the daytime and must not have blocks between it and the sky. The highest tier of solar generators, the energized solar generator, does work during both the day and night, but it requires blistering ingots, a resource that we don't have access to this early in the game. Here are the raw materials required for a single solar generator. For us to have power all day and all night, we need to store excess power during the day so that we can have it during the night. Since there are 10 minutes during the night and 10 minutes during the day, for each four joules per second of solar power that we have, we would need to have 2,400 joules of storage, which we can get with two big capacitors and one medium capacitor. This can be quite a bit early game. So which one should you make? 
For most scenarios, during the early game, I recommend coal generators, as we simply don't yet have the resources to make enough energy for full-time automatic circuits. Once we use these for a bit, we will soon be able to work on some of the more advanced circuits and generators to make fully automatic power systems. If you're wondering what to do with all this energy, stay tuned, as our next videos are going to be covering the most effective electric systems for dust generation all the way to mass production. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you found it helpful, please subscribe. It's free, it takes two seconds, and it helps me out a ton. Thank you so much, and I will see you all next time.